Bell or Coffee Botherers. I'm Kev from CoffeeBot.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Nimox Lux Coffee Grinder. Get your director sent this to me to review on loan only. I will be giving it back. This video isn't sponsored by anyone. I'm not being paid by Gezia or anyone else to do this, but I am an affiliate of various coffee related companies, including Gadget Direct. So if you do go to their website through the link in the description below or through one of the links at coffeebog.co.uk and buy a machine from Gadget Direct, I'll earn an affiliate commission. Thank you. So this is the Nemox Lux. I wanted to review it because, on paper at least, this grinder is really interesting. I really like the Sage Smart Grinder Pro, and around 200 quid, I don't think there are many grinders that compete taking everything into account, ease of use, build quality, looks, and so on. But when I reviewed the Iberical MC2, and I reviewed that at coffeebob.co.uk forward slash MC2, I found that this grinder performed a bit better for Espresso when paired with the Gadget Classic than the Sage Smart Grinder Pro. I noted that the Iberical MC2 wasn't quite as good as an all-rounder grinder because a stepless adjustment made it very difficult for that. And I wasn't a big fan of the timer, I found that a bit of a faff. The main thing for me was the build quality was a bit lacking. The grind button kept popping off, it looked and felt just a little bit cheap, but it is a bit cheap, but around 130 quid. It's a bit of a rough diamond, really, but it does a good job. And you can get the MC2 from happydonkey.co.uk, by the way. The reason the Neomox Lux really interests me is it's essentially the Iberical MC2 in terms of the units, but in a better quality package and with an on-demand grinder rather than a timer. This grinder looks much nicer to me, it's a really good looking little grinder in my humble opinion, but it's not just about the looks, the build quality feels much better and it's a much more robust build than the Iberical MC2 which is a bit plasticky. There's only one negative I can see and that is that the Lux has stepped adjustment and not the same worm dial stepless adjustment as with the MC2. So this is made more as an all-rounder grinder for more convenient switching back and forth to different grind positions for different brew methods rather than being a dedicated espresso grinder. But before you dismiss the Lux as an espresso grinder, there's a mod you can do to turn this grinder into a stepless grinder and I've created a short link to that. So if you go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash Nimox mod, you'll get the modding instructions. I'm going to do a video doing this, by the way, not on this one as I don't own it, but I'm going to buy one, mod it, and then give it away as a competition prize at coffeeblog.co.uk. To be notified when the competition is live, just join my Brewtime mailing list at coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash Brewtime. So the Nimox Lux uses 38mm conical hardened steel burr, same as with the Iberical MC2. It has a 150 watt motor at 10,200 RPM, but that speed is stepped down to 800 RPM to reduce the speed and convert that into torque. And doing this also prevents the coffee from being heated too much while grinding. It's a small machine, it's got a really small hopper, which means it's very low profile, which could come in handy if you don't have much vertical space on your kitchen worktop. It's around 30 centimetres tall, 18 centimetres deep, and nine and a half centimetres wide, so it has got a really small footprint. So first of all, I'm gonna grind some coffee at the very finest grind size, so we can have a look at that in terms of grind size and consistency, and we're gonna do the same medium setting and the same at the most coarse setting and see what happens. By the way, the coffee I'm using today is my own coffee. You can get this from my coffee website, The Coffee Works, cworks.co.uk. It's all eco-roasted using biofuel made from used coffee grounds and it's very nice coffee. But I would say that you'll have to try it to see if I'm right. Okay, so now I'm gonna grind some coffee and dial in with the Gadget Classic Pro. I'll speed this up and see you in a minute when I dial in. So let's get dialed in.
too quick, I need to go finer. That was 22 seconds and 49 grams, so far too much, far too quick. Go finer. That was four clicks away from finest. So I'm gonna go a couple of clicks away from finest now. Click away from finest now. What I'm doing here, by the way, is purging coffee, where you see me just grinding a little bit and chucking it away, and that's to get rid of the exchange retention. The retained coffee grinds end up in your next basket the next time you grind. So, on most grinders, including the Nemox Lux, there is gonna be a few grams of exchange retention. So you need to purge some coffee through, get rid of it before you grind your next basket full of coffee. On the niche zero, you don't need to do that because it's almost zero retention, or more importantly, almost zero exchange retention. There's so little coffee grinds that end up in your next basket from your last grind that you don't need to worry about purging coffee which is one of the main features of the niche zero but with most grinders you do need to purge a bit of coffee through each time you grind while you're dialing in or the first time you grind each day or when you've not ground for a while <laughs> seconds and we're too slow this time and this is one of the issues I've got with this grinder or any stepped grinder for espresso is I could do with going in between a couple of grind settings here there's the two clicks I'm, I'm going from I could really do with getting in between them too bad, that's a bit under extracted, but it is very nice coffee, but still, we're not dialed in. One click finer again. The Motta 500ml jug, is it 500? 450, 500, something like that, milliliter jug. Then I'm using, I always fill it, and most jugs, I always fill them to just below the indentation of the spout. And if you've seen my milk steaming tutorial on the Gadget Classic Pro and a couple of other videos where I've mentioned this, I don't press the steam button and then wait for the light to come on. I start much sooner and you'll find a few people 
with instructions on this method, but everyone's got a slightly different idea of what works best in terms of how long to leave it. Generally speaking, I seem to find about seven or eight, maybe nine seconds, something like that, is around the best time to start steaming after clicking the steam wand. But let's just see what works best for you. Just rolling the milk now, just distributing that microphone throughout the rest of the milk while heating the milk up as well. Around 60 65 degrees Celsius, about that. Like that. Glossy, looks like melted ice cream or gloss paint. What we're looking for that shine. Not bad, I'd say art, even if I do say so myself. So there you go, you've seen me dialing in and you've seen me pulling a few shots and you've seen me make a flat white and a very nice tasting flat white I must say. It's quite a nice grinder to use, it's fairly quiet the only negative for me, as I've mentioned, is the fact that it's a stepped grinder. And as I was dialing in then, it was really quite difficult to get it right. There are 10 steps, 10 preset settings, 10 clicks, if you like. And I don't just think I needed to be sort of halfway in between. I think you could probably cut them 10 settings down into 10 and I could do with been maybe three clicks one way or the other. So as I said, if I was gonna own this grinder, I would mod it to fit a worm dial to make it a stepless grinder for espresso because that would just give you that ability to finally dial in. And I just wasn't able then doing that dialing in to perfectly dial in. If you're happy with being there or thereabouts and you're not a perfectionist and you're not too worried about nailing the extraction, nailing the grind, getting it perfect, then by all means just use it as a stepped grinder. But for me personally, I would want to mod this and be able to really finely tune in the grind. And as I said, I'll put a link in the description below to the modded instructions. Just bear in mind, I would imagine that you void your warranty if you mod it. I think that's probably the case, but I would take that risk if it was me and I would mod it if I wanted to use it for espresso. And as I've said in a future video, I am going to buy one of these. I'm not going to do it to this because this isn't mine. It's been given to me on loan only by Gadget Direct and I'll put a link to Gadget Direct in the description below as well. But as I've said, I will buy one, I'll mod it, I'll do a video of me modding it and probably making a hash of modding it and injuring myself or something. But I will then 
give it away, the modded version, as a competition prize at coffeeblog.co.uk. And if you subscribe to the Brewtime mailing list, as I said earlier, but I'm just reminding it in case you forgot by now, if you subscribe to the Brewtime mailing list at coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash Brewtime, I'll let you know when that competition is live. So that's it for now because I've finished my coffee. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not click this image here and watch another one? And if you have enjoyed the video, click the like button. Thank you very much. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, click this image around here somewhere to subscribe to my channel. Tatty bye. Sorry, one more time, Ethan. Do that again. Mm. Do that again.